the deadly fertile lands, how I handle them safely, and my safety protocols coming up. Hey, before we get started today, I want to give a big thank you to some of my loyal subscribers. Now, when I say thank you to these guys, I really mean it because these guys went ahead on and hit our PayPal logo and they donated to our channel and they were very generous and it really means a lot to us and it and it is a big help. Uh, Patrick Mullahan, thank you, bro. Uh, Len Brewer. Len, I know we've talked, brother, and we've been going back and forth and and... Dude, I, I'm, thank you so much, Len. It really means a lot. Uh, Patrick Barton, thank you, brother. Um, but I want to give a big shout-out to a special subscriber. He, he went above and beyond. He actually donated a very large amount of money to help buy us a damn camera. And it just blew me and Dina away. I mean, it's just unbelievable the generosity of people. It, it gave me faith in humanity again. <laughs> that there's people that actually care and want to see this content. And, and they actually believe in what I'm trying to preach. So, thank you so much, Matthew. And we're going to buy this new camera. We've already ordered it. Now, I don't know if it's going to change our videos, so we still got to learn how to do this stuff. <laughs> so, we're working on it. So, hang in there with us. We're learning a whole new skill set with this filming stuff. The snake stuff we got down pat. It's filming it that we're trying to learn. So hang in there with us. And we're going to keep on doing this. And hopefully y'all enjoy it. This is a Bothrops day. So we're going to film it. And we're not feeding anything today y'all. But you're going to see me handle some, some crazy snakes today. We're going to go over our protocols. And we've had a lot of response people asking about. Go over your protocols, your safe handling. We, we love that stuff. And we've done this once before, but we're going to re-hit on this. I don't think I can do this enough, but we're going to start with protocols. Our protocols are as such. This is what we live by, okay? Now, I spend a great deal of time in the snake house. And one of my big beliefs is, yeah, I'm in here alone working a lot, okay? But having either my partner I've got another little cat that comes out and helps me, but I've also got my wife, okay? And even though Dean is not hands-on with the snakes, she plays a big part in this. And she probably plays the most important part of this because she's my second, okay? And when you're doing this kind of work and you're by yourself, you still need contact. You still need somebody to know your schedule, what you're doing, what's going on. Because if an accident does happen, you're going to need help, okay? I don't just come in here whenever I feel like it, if Dean is at work or I'll chop in and, and come in here and start working. It's on a schedule. But the importance of this is having backup, having somebody to help you because you never know when an accident is going to happen. I mean, having your little things, your car keys, right where you know where they're at. You're not scurrying around looking for car keys to get to the hospital. All these little things come into play, but having a second is very important, okay? Because if I have an accident, I know where Dean is at. She knows where I'm at. I can I keep my cell phone in here. She's on speed dial. Dr. Sean Bush is on speed dial. My personal physician is on speed dial. I mean, I just hit a number and go, I got tagged. Boom. The clock's on, Jack. It's time to get busy. Let's... Get this rolling because as soon as you get bit, you're on a schedule. You're on that time schedule. Every minute counts, okay? We don't work in here unless we got our second. You need your second. Now, I'm not saying that you got to have somebody with you at all times. I'm saying you got to know where somebody's at at all times so you can get a hold of them immediately. That's a big part of this because you're going you're gonna to need help. There's no two ways about it. You get tagged, you're going to need help. You may, start, you may start showing systemic envenomation signs immediately. 
it may take 20, 30 minutes, depending on what bit you. So having that second is very important. One of my big things is I work in here every day, okay? I'm, I'm handling venomous creatures every day, but if I'm not feeling good, if I'm sick, if I'm not on the top of my game, I don't do it. I let it wait a day until I feel better. If I feel tired, if I feel sluggish, if I've got a damn head cold and I can't breathe good, if I'm, I don't care what it is, if I don't feel 100%, I don't come in here and do nothing. I'll let it sit a day. I'll work twice as hard tomorrow. And that's just a big thing with me. Another big part of my protocols is, of course, antivenom. But I want to teach you all about something else. Now, we keep folders on every species that we keep. And now, there's a resource out there. And I've went over this before, but I'm going to go over it again. It's called the Clinical Toxinology Resource Site. And we'll put a link to this so you all can find it, okay? And we keep it out now, because today we're working with Bothrops. So, this is my Bothrops folder. I've got a line of these that hang up in every room that we have of what's in that room. And every species that I keep is in here, okay? Every Bothrop species has got its own folder. And these are three or four pages deep under each species. But like today, we're working with all the Bothrops, so I've got the whole Bothrops folder out. Now, what's important about this is this site gives you everything that you need to know about an envenomation, about that animal, what kind of antivenom, Literally, that animal's venom composition, what that venom has, what it doesn't have, it, it, it breaks everything down to you. And what this does for you is this is so important because this saves time for your physician, for whoever's treating you. Now, i got to leg up on things because I've got, a, I've got an in. I've, I've got a buddy that is a very talented snake bite doctor. He's the best guy in the world. I mean, Sean Bush from Venom ER. He's a personal friend of mine. I get bit, he gets called, my physician gets called. I mean, it's all in a plan. We have a plan ahead of time. That's what this is all about. Plan ahead of time. Plan for the worst. Don't hope for the best. Make the best happen with your protocols and your safety procedures. Because in case of an accident, this goes with you. Okay? Along with your antivenom. This saves time for that physician. He's not wasting a precious moment of your time because when you get bit, the clock's on, Jack. It's ticking. Time is everything. This tells him what he's working with. This tells him a treatment plan. This tells him what kind of venom that snake contains. This tells him everything he needs to know to start a plan, a treatment plan on you in case of an envenomation. Every venomous keeper should have a folder on every venomous animal he works with. Anyways, this goes with you, saves time, and your antivenom goes with you. We have several of these little boxes, you know, but I carry a polyvalent that works on all my bothrops, and it works on all my lachesis, and it works on all my rattlesnakes. The African stuff, we've got a polyvalent that works on that stuff. But you notice we, we keep our antivenoms in a little box, stays in a nice, cool, dry place. Everything goes with us. This gets snatched off the wall. This gets taken from the antivenom stash. The victim whew, swept off to the hospital. We know where the car keys are at, <laughs> and I know where my driver's at. Just common sense stuff to keep you safe in case of an accident. We're going to hit on antivenom. I'm only going to pull one of these out of here. But you can see we have, I've showed this box before and I've showed my African box before. But we keep a stash of it. We keep enough of it. Okay. And the thing is, is you don't want to just go, okay, I got antivenom and you have two vials. That ain't going to do shit. Honestly. Excuse my language, but, you know, a lot of these big dangerous snakes, a loading dose is probably six to eight vials. And that's your initial dose that they're going to jack you up with. We carry a, it's a polyvalent, okay, and it's good for, it's, you know, it's Bathrico, Lachesis, Crotalico, which is Crotalus. But if you don't have this, work on getting it. I mean, it's just, it's, it's. It's good for all of us because if you get bit and you ain't got any venom, 
they're going to scurry around and try to find it. Okay, because these local hospitals and a lot of places are not going to have exotic antivenom. You're going to see a lot of guys say, oh, I got antivenom for everything. I, uh, a lot of other creators, a lot of other YouTube experts claim they have their own antivenom and they're experts. Tell them to prove it. Pull it out. Show it. There's my Central South American box. Prove it and show it. Ask them to do it. If they don't do it, you know why they don't do it? Because they ain't got it. They're full of crap. They don't have it. That's why they don't pull it out on their channel and show it. And they're the experts, right? That eats me up, you know. You're going to keep 50, 60 venomous snakes, but not keep something to keep yourself safe? It's foolish. This is what I live by. With, with what I do, my job, my work, my, my animals, first of all is keeping the people around you safe. Keeping yourself safe. And then keeping the animal safe. And that's what I live by. First of all, my wife's safety is everything. Anybody around me, their safety is everything. And that's all, you know, locking cages. I mean, we're strapped down here like a like like brinks. <laughs> I mean, locking cages, having a snake proof room. If a snake does end up getting away from you and out, he ain't getting out of the damn room. You know what I mean? Having locking doors for every one of your snake rooms, for every for your snake houses. Everything needs to be buttoned down tight. To have a safe environment to do your job and do what you do. And anti-venom. So <laughs> I'm going to quit griping about anti-venom. But please, guys, clinical toxinology site, anti-venom. If you're not on it, if you're not working with it, if you're not doing it, get there. Keep working towards that goal to get the stuff that you need. So, But we're going to get on some things today with cleaning, handling, and we're going to talk about some cool stuff with Bothrops, and I'm going to teach you guys some stuff today. Okay, we're going to start with cleaning these these baby Mugeni, and even at this size, you got to be extremely careful. These things are little pogo sticks, and normally I would use my hook to open up the drawers, but these are tight, so you'll notice I keep my hands way down low, back out of the way for these things, and I platform them. I use my little, my little lid to scoop them and platform them, which you'll see how I do it, but I'm going to tell you, um, um, these things are wild. I mean, a lot of your bothrops are, and and but and I don't believe in in hooking snakes, any snakes at all, um, hooking them and dangling them and moving them around to put them in something. That's when a snake comes off the hook, lands on the floor, and you're trying to trying to boggle it around, and it just becomes a disaster. I mean, you keep your containers close so you can do a quick transfer. You know that that's the key, quick. Quick, smooth, easy transfer. But all these need to be cleaned. And there's a the little guy down there. Let me see if the GoPro's got him in there. Eh, not really. We'll see how it looks. But, and I use my lid for everything. I'm going to get his little green stuff out of there. That's the mice squeaking. <laughs> And you can see this little pogo stick. And usually when they're hanging there is when they start to go crazy. And I always keep my lid on a little bit of a slant like this, okay? But it's when they feel their body leaving the ground that they start getting squirrely. And he's gonna, there we go. I'm gonna get over, you can get over the top of these so they can see the animal. And that's a little Bothroth Mugenai. That's one of the ones we produced last season. We had 11 babies born. All right, let me lit him up. And we're gonna clean his little tub out real quick. Now, I'll raise stuff in tubs. There's that big controversy, tubs versus caging and all that. When you keep snakes at a magnitude like I do, you gotta keep stuff in racks and tubs. I mean, and, and tubs are great for holding humidity, for, for um, keeping a lot of animals in a small space but you gotta be able to gradually bump them up as they go. Different size tubs for different size animals as they're growing. So I call them grow out tubs because that's where we start them in the little tubs. Then we move them over to the next size, then to the bigger size, then they graduate to an exhibit. But we're gonna go ahead and 
clean this guy out real quick and he has got some feces in there and even at this size for little bothrops they shed fangs okay so you can curl up a paper towel and then have a teeny weeny little fang in there that you don't see and squish it in your hand so i kind of grab the feces in and roll it forward and then work around it and ball it up my little bit of hex chlorhexidine kills everything then we'll scrub it out real good safe for the animal as long as he doesn't ingest it kills any kind of ickies from that snake defecating in his tub all right and these guys i i keep a lot of baby stuff on paper towels this stuff stays on paper towels and you can see i've got my helix set at 82 <clears throat> and that's just a little two inch strip in the back of the tub that that will get to that temperature but literally inside the tub where the animal is the ambient temperature is the room temperature and it's it's 75 in here right now and that's kind of what we keep it at until summer it'll get a little bit warmer so his warm spot is literally at about 80 degrees because i lose a degree or two through the tub and then we give him some fresh clean water here's a little trick guys like for doing my tubs and stuff i keep a jug of water and that way it's always the right temperature i ain't running back and forth trying to do water containers one one at a time unless they need to be disinfected then i do them all at once but you keep a little jug of water in the room where you're keeping your snakes and it keeps it at the right temperature it's the same temperature that was in there so you ain't putting cold water in water too warm it's just it's a little thing i do put his little perch in there all the little bathrops like to perch up that's just what they do all right his little greenery back in there for some enrichment all right and he's all ready to go and same deal transfer them keep it close don't hook your snake and try to move across the room to put them in a bucket or hook them to try to get them somewhere else where i mean you should never have a snake on the hook and be walking around with it that's disaster waiting to happen your transfer should be quick into a container and back out into a tub and notice with, with, with my platform i platform a lot of the little stuff because when they're dangling is when they start tripping out they think something's picking them up and trying to eat them so but i always keep it at a little bit of a slant if you keep it flat they do have the capability of coming forward and maybe getting that thumb that's holding i keep it at a slant and work it like this this will support their weight in case i gotta push them away i can it's kind of almost like dropping them as a shield but then we'll pick him up and these are flighty little shits and then we keep them up like that on a slant and notice how he's not bugging out he's not he's not actually going too crazy because he doesn't feel his body leaving the ground he's not hanging there so he's actually a little more comfortable on a platform and there's a safe distance between me and him and if i need to i can very quickly drop him back in there or take him and drop him right back into his little tub all right we're gonna buzz through these and look at him he's already shooting out of here at me no you don't you little shit and there's that little fella that's the nice one that's that that's my whole back <laughs> you want to come over the top of these so you can see the animal there you go stick that camera over there don't put your hand over there this was the one that was born that was really light colored and really pretty just came out exceptional it's still got the remnants of a of a of a fuzzy in there it ate a fuzzy a couple days ago and this is universal in all snake rooms when the hook is sitting on top of a container that means there's a snake in there <laughs> okay your can 
your hook sits on top of it. Once you got an animal container, a container, you set your snake hook on it. That, that's, that's universal with snake keepers. That means there's a snake inside. Oh. That is an exceptional little Mugenai. Little Bothroth Mugenai. All right, little girl. That's a little girl. I'm gonna move over. And I always look to see where they're at before I get anywhere near that to open it. Now I got it enough where I can pull it with my hook because this one happens to be curled up right there at the end. That's another little screamer right there. And they're growing. They're growing like spiders. All right. He's all ready. She's all ready. It's a little girl. No, you don't. Once again, just supporting that animal, it doesn't, it, it's less stressful on them. When they got a platform, it's just less stressful. It doesn't drive them crazy. And it gives you that added, oh, that added security of not dropping a snake and it dropping on your foot or hitting the floor and taking off. But quick, simple, easy. That's the procedure. You want things done quickly, but simple. I mean, don't hook a snake and walk around a room with it. <laughs> or have to walk from one area to another with it. Contain it. Put it in something quick, something close. Do it close so it's safe. But okay, we're going to move on because now I need to get in here with the bigger Mugenai. And I'm going to pair this male up with the female again. Okay, we're going to move on and clean these larger Mugenais, the adults. Just a real quick run through and make sure that there's no feces in their cages. And now these guys, of course, these are larger. So we're going to give them a little more reach out, of course. <laughs> we don't want them this close to us. But, uh, and these snakes are at that size that they can be hooked and transferred quickly. So, and of course, we do these, we stand way back. And this female, she's coming up on her breeding time. And I've had the male in there periodically with her. And last year they bred in May. So the male is definitely game, but I don't think she's pheromonic yet. So I think it's going to take just another month and she'll be pheromonic and she'll be producing. Okay, and that that is what I call a coil hook. When you can grab a snake in a coil hook like that, that is very easy. It's the whole thing of keeping them close into your transfer tub. Close is best. Man, she's putting some size on. She's getting big. Okay, and I'm going to just run through this thing really quickly. Bounce her right back in there. And, oh, she is she, she's getting ready to get squirrely on me. All right, and those I keep my containers close. The closer, the better, guys. All right, we're just going to close her up for the moment. And I'm going to reach in here real quick, and I'm going to extract this male and put him in there with her. Use your tools for everything. Use your tools for everything. You don't never want to be reaching into a cage, even if a snake is at the other end of the cage, be under a hide. They have the capability of shooting out of there and coming at you so quick that there's nothing you can do. You're not going to get out of the way of them. It's just not going to happen. You're not faster than a snake. <laughs> now, I know you're probably thinking, well, why didn't he just leave that one open and grab that snake and throw it in there? Here's why. You don't leave a cage door open when you're opening a second cage. 
because what's going to happen is I'm over here working on this one, okay, trying to get his hide out, extract his ass. This one is open. I'm in proximity here. I'm not in a good spot to have two snakes at once. You don't try to work with two open cages at one time, one at a time. Pull the one animal out, contain him, okay, he's good. Then I can go ahead and work on this cage. He's actually clean, but to save time, we'll go back to that one later. But here's the thing. You don't want to have two open cages at once. With one with an animal in it, one with a snake on a hook. Contain that animal. If you're going to start pairing things up, contain that animal. And then open that cage and swiftly put that one into that cage. Because having two open at once, it just doesn't make sense. Because if this one decides to shoot out and hit the floor, you got one on the hook, one on the floor. Give that animal a minute to settle down and get settled into a spot. Then go ahead and insert the other animal. And she's already done that. I don't know if you can see that, Dina, if you can get close enough to that. She's already on her spot. She's already on her spot in there. She's coiled up on her log. She's good to go. So that means I'm going to put the male in the other end. But what I'm going to do is with her, she's got such a feeding response. And if I open that door, she might just shoot out of here to bite at me. I'm going to give her a little mist just to break that behavior before I slip this mail in the air. <laughs> Let me grab my sprayer. We're going to give her a little squirt so she don't come out of there and decide to bite this mail. Now this Bothrops is at that size where you can easily hook them. And move them quickly as long as your containers are close enough to each other you don't want to have them on the hook and moving him around any kind of distance i mean i try to keep it as close as possible quick transfer even though he's dangling and they don't like to be dangling that's what sets him off if you do it quickly you can get away with it all right let's get this done now can you hear that did you hear the kaboons? That's the last year's babies going off in there. Okay, she's not shooting out of there at me. But just to break that feeding response, we're going to yeah, set her back. There we go. Actually, she's just starting to cloud up a little bit. She'll shed her skin, and I'll bet you I'll get copulation. But we'll go ahead and give this just a little bit of humidity. Now. Get him close enough. It's all about positioning. It's all about having your stuff in line. Okay, we can go ahead and put him in on this side. And then I always try to desensitize him a little bit. I'll touch her a little bit. Just so she hides her head, desensitize her before... He ends up touching her and she bites him. It's a big thing with the Bothrops. They bite each other, man. They're just vicious little suckers. It's because of their feeding response. They got a feeding response that's just insane. Notice I'm using my hook for everything. This thing is, is an extension of my body. I use them to open doors, close doors. I mean, it's, it's an extension of my body. I keep it in place like this to keep that door closed while I'm reaching in to turn my locks also. Just in case of that door accidentally falling. And then I'm right there with my hand in the way and take a bite. Okay. All right, mission two completed. Okay, next we're going to clean these little Arutus, um, my male, and uh, I've got a little sub adult female. They definitely both need to be uh, maintenance. But. I do them the same way. I platform them. I tub them. But we're going to start with this little girl. And just her being on the platform, she feels more comfortable. And I've got it at a little slant. In case she decides to rock it, I can, I can push it forward and keep it away from me. So... 
It's all about ease, making it easy. Can you get the animal in there, D? Maybe I'm in the way, huh? And there she goes, starting to rattle that tail. That's a indicator that she ain't happy. <laughs> and she's getting ready to burst into a into a bout of bad behavior. Keeping your animals clean is important. I know that I've, I've seen some other videos. Guys are like, well, the more you handle the animals, uh, it stresses them. And you're putting yourself in, you know, it's a numbers game. The more you work with them, the more you're taking a chance of getting bit. If, if you're going to keep animals and you're going to put them in a cage or you're going to keep them in a tub or I don't care what scenario it is, you better keep them clean and take care of them. I mean, that animal can't get away from its own feces. You got to give them a clean environment to live in. That way they're a healthier, happier animal. And healthy, happy animals will produce babies for you. <laughs> and got my shield. And these things are notorious for bad behavior. I mean, just being flighty and bitey and jumpy. That's the Bothrops Alternatus, the Arutu. And this, this snake, believe it or not, she is only a year old. Nope, oh, there you go. Get back. Close her up, and we're going to keep moving and pull trouble out here. Now, this male, he is flighty as hell, and you got to handle him very, very gently because he is a jumper. We go ahead and platform him. Notice how I got my, my platform here. It's on an angle, but it's supporting his body weight, and he's not trying to take off. Set him down in there. He's getting big too. And we're going to go ahead and see that? That's Bothros behavior. Explosive behavior. And you don't waste your time putting a lid on. You do it quickly. The more you hesitate, the more you take your time to try to put a lid on. And, and, and if, if you hesitate, you're going to get bit. You do it quickly. Bam. You get it done. Okay, we're going to pop him back in his tub, and he's already showing me that he's going to rock it on me, okay? And this is why I use this lid and the hook thing kind of in unison, and he's rattling his tail. He's flying around inside this tub. He's agitated, and this is when it gets hairy, okay? This is when it gets dangerous, and you do this quickly, and you don't lose your cool because as soon as you lose your cool, the snake hits the ground, and he's under a rack, or he's th and, and that's when accidents happen. So you remain calm and do this very carefully. And I'm going to use this as a shield so he doesn't strike up at me. Oh yeah, he's already bouncy and being a typical Bothrops. He's rattling his tail. I'm going to platform him real quick and drop him right in there. Nice and smooth and fast. <laughs> he's busting his tail in there. He's like, you got lucky. No. I followed my protocols. Simple. Scoop. Move him. Don't waste no time with it. Okay, y'all. We're going to move on. And I've got to extract this big female out of here. And that's what we're going to do next. <laughs> okay, next. I've got to pull this big leg course female. Now, this snake is six foot and this big around. And I want to be as gentle as possible with her. I mean, she's got to be pulled out of there and cleaned. And this snake, large bothrops don't do good hooking them and tailing them. They're just, they're notorious for swinging around with their mouth wide open. And first they try the flight scenario to get away from you. When they figure out they can't get away from you because you got them by the tail and you're trying to hook them, then they do the fight scenario. They turn around and they're coming at you with their mouth wide open. And it's when they leave the ground is when they start losing it. They just, they feel their bodies leaving the ground. And I think in their minds, they think something's picking them up and trying to eat them. So they're going to fight for their lives. So, 
I've tried shift boxes with her. She won't go in them. She doesn't use a hide box. So we have to shift her outside the cage. This is, I mean, I use this big tub because it drops open. And I kind of gently pull her out and coax her into this tub. But the thing is, is this snake, I believe, is really close to giving birth. And she is, really looks good. I mean, I, I think she's getting ready to drop some babies for me. But... So I want to be real gentle with her, and I don't want to stress her. That's the main factor. I don't want to stress her, and I want to stay safe. <laughs> so I lay this thing down on its side like this, and I open that up like that. So she's got a straight shot in here, and I just kind of gently coax her into there without having to lift her and stress her out. And stress me out. <laughs> Need to lock off of here. And this is a big, dangerous snake right here. Big, dangerous Bothrops lay, of course. And you notice I got my longest hook possible. And let's coax this. Come on, little mama. Oh, I yes, I know. She is already starting to vibrate her tail around. And that is a, a big snake. Okay, girl, nice and easy. Nice and easy, girl. There you go. See? And all she wants to do is shoot right back into her cage. Which is a good thing, because when I open this up, that's what she's going to do. She's going to want to shoot right back into her cage. But we're going to get her in there like this. Sometimes you got to do it fast and close her up. Don't waste no time. Clip that down. Now the snake is secure. And you notice she was she was being gentle because I wasn't bullying her. If you bully them, that's when they start this crazy shit. If you're gentle with them and coax them, you'll get them to go where you want them to go. But when they explode, Bothrops are notorious for exploding. That's when you got your hands full. And that's when they start doing the flight or the fight. So gentle, smooth, easy, fast. Now, normally I would flip this thing up and move it out of the way, but I don't want to stress her. I mean, I just don't want to stress this animal. Uh, her having these babies is really important. So, I'm doing everything I can to keep her nice and calm. And I'm going to jump in here and clean this feces out of here real quick. And we're going to put her back. Okay, it's time to put this big girl back. We've cleaned the feces out of her cage, fluffed her mulch spot cleaned fresh water and uh she's ready to go back in her home now the ideal of this is to drop this lid down and coax her back into her cage which she'll normally shoot right back in there but you never know so i've got my wife up on a six foot ladder up off the ground in case this snake decides to go in that direction and i've got a little barrier in front of her so the snake has no chance of getting near her she's up off the ground and behind a wall <laughs> But, and she got the camera up on it. If you guys seen this, you would laugh. But that's the, you know, I mean, we want to keep everybody safe as possible. So, if he goes anywhere, he's gonna, she's going to come after me. So, I'm going to go ahead and open this up. And we're going to coax her big butt right out of there. Are you down, D? Okay. We're going to stay out of the way so she doesn't pick up a heat signature on me because I am warm. All right, let's see where she's at. Can you see the animal in there, D? Okay. We're going to gently coax this big girl, and we want to keep her stress-free right now. That a girl. She's already rattling her tail a little bit. And let her just kind of go in there on her own. We're not hooking her. We're not tailing her. We're not causing her any undue stress. Look at this scale separation. She is really blowed up back there. Man, I hope she drops about 40 babies. <laughs> All right. No undue stress. Come on, Mama. All the way in. I don't want to poke at you. There you go. Move that out of the way. Close our door. Simple, safe, effective. That's the key to working with Bothrops. 
tail them and hooking them. Some guys do it, and I've done it. I mean, it can be done, but you're putting yourself in harm's way doing that a lot, especially with something going like this and out of control crazy trying to bite you. So I do the shift technique with the really big ones. That's why I keep them low to the floor. I do the same thing with the big rattlesnakes. Shift the box outside if possible, you know. But uh, so we're done for today. <laughs> All the bath drops are clean and next what comes is the feeding so we'll do another video feeding all these crazy animals but anyways if you guys are new to the channel hit the logo and subscribe and come on back and check out venom central this is willie checking out later